progressive vision for the future. And we're well aware of the cost of the status quo. They've produced some of the longest bridge wait times along the U.S.-Mexico border, threatening tens of thousands of jobs in our community. They've produced a VA system that can't take care of all the veterans who've taken care of us. They produced $5 billion in economic activity at Fort Bliss, with most of that activity going to out-of-town employers and their employees. We need a progressive vision that can lead to El Paso becoming the epicenter for U.S. Latin American finance, trade, and commerce. They can capitalize on the Medical Center of the Americas and provide precisely those kind of 21st century high paying jobs that our young people are now leaving El Paso to go find in other communities. And we can do right by the 80,000 veterans, the 30,000 active duty soldiers and their families who will make a decision on where they're going to retire and have the best VA system in the country with a flagship new VA hospital to take care of those veterans that we're now sending to Albuquerque and Big Spring, Texas. But to do so, we must elect someone new, someone who has the vision, who has the courage, who has the experience, and who has the ability to get the job done. Okay, any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, do you believe it is wise to take your views about legalizing illegal drugs to Congress? I think what is wise and what is right to do is when you are confronted with the problem as an elected leader, and that problem in this case that you're referring to is in our sister city of Ciudad Juarez, more than 10,000 people of all ages and backgrounds have been slaughtered in the last four or five years. The moral imperative tells us that we must do the right thing, even if it's not politically popular, even if it's not politically convenient, and even if it doesn't help our personal careers. And in my case, in what you're referring to, I raised the issue of the drug war that has led in part uh, to the slaughter that we've seen in Juarez, that has led the United States to imprison more people than any other country in the world, and has led you and I as the U.S. taxpayer to spend over a trillion dollars with the effect that at any school in the Isleta School District or any school in El Paso, it's easier to find drugs today than it was 40 years ago before we began this war. My bottom line answer to your question is we can and we must do better, and what we're doing today is not working. So we need to look at some different ways to do this. Any other questions? Yes. Representative O'Rourke, about a year ago, you were quoted in the El Paso Times uh, when talking about Mayor Cook, and you spoke about how he was the first one to get to work and last one to leave, and you said you couldn't do that job. Now you're asking to be sent to Washington. Can you reconcile those statements? You know, really it comes down to I couldn't do that job because I have spent six years at City Hall doing uh, the, the job I needed to do as city representative. And uh, as anyone who's worked with me, including Diana Ramirez, who did a lot of the work in our office, can tell you, uh, with a staff of 2.5, uh, we held a weekly constituent meeting every single week. We answered every single constituent phone call and email. And I think we did a terrific job. I always showed up. I always stood up and took a stand on the issues, and I never took a pass. Uh, what I want to do as your U.S. Congressman is bring that hard work ethic, uh, my willingness to take on the tough issues and lead on those things that El Paso knows better than any other community in the country, like immigration, like trade, like the drug war, and provide some very effective independent leadership for our community. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. You mentioned that you want In fact, it was. The city had a very limited $4 million budget uh, that was provided by the uh, Franchise agreement with El Paso Electric Company. Those $4 million were going to be used for economic development. Under my leadership, and you can check the public record in the tapes, uh, I argued for and won the debate to allocate $3.5 million of those dollars to the Medical Center of the Americas. And uh, that's, that's the, the, the short and direct answer to your question. I've, I've shown that I'm willing to do that in the past, and I'll, I'll do that again as your congressman. Okay, one more quick question. Yes, sir. Is uh, Roberto, after being a member of the Red Bank in El Paso, how would you, uh, how would you uh, reassure me you will not decay my vote again? You are speaking about the uh, health care benefit vote that I was one 
uh, 5 to uh, say that, that look, um, that the intent may have been to strip uh, domestic partners of city employees of their benefits. Uh, the reality is not only did the voters do that, but they stripped the benefits from retired police and firefighter and other city employees who had given their life service to the community and in return were expecting these health benefits. I had no way of knowing whether any of the hundreds of people who were going to be affected and have their health benefits stripped had cancer, had, uh, were receiving chemotherapy, or were perfectly healthy. And in good conscience, I could not vote to strip those benefits from those people. Not an easy political decision, not convenient for a political career, but the right thing to do. And I hope that it shows you my character in the face of adversity. I'm very proud to have been a part of some very significant change that's taken place in El Paso over the last six years while I was on city council. And I know that I only played a small part but it was a significant part, and I worked with groups like the East Side Civic Association and numerous other neighborhood associations to make significant improvements in El Paso. We made progress on our, our mass transit system. We went from being one of the worst to one of the best in the nation. We made significant improvements to our quality of life, so much so that Newsweek Magazine last year named El Paso the number one can-do community in the United States. I think we need to take that can-do spirit and that can-do attitude to Washington, D.C. and the U.S. Congress, an institution that can't do, won't do, and hasn't been able to get the job done. And that word job is really important. If you elect me, I will treat this as a job, not a career, and not an appointment. The first bill that I'll sponsor or co-sponsor will be one for term limits, because you should have somebody serving you in Congress who goes up there to get the job done and then gets out of the way. I'd love to do that for you and for the rest of El Paso. Thanks for, for your time today. I would like to ask Congressman Reyes if seniority and the 16 years that he spent in the U.S. Congress are so important and beneficial to this community, why do we, for example, have a VA system that recently ranked as the worst in the country? You want to answer it? The answer to this question, his answer. his answer to this question is that even though he's been up there for 16 years, he has accrued one of the worst voting records in the U.S. Congress. More than 95% of his colleagues in the House and Senate show up to work more often than he does. In the 16 years that he was on the U.S. Congress, he's only passed six bills. Two of those are to rename buildings in downtown El Paso. And while you may have seen a Super Bowl commercial where the congressman took credit for every federal dollar that's ever landed in El Paso, and it was amazing that he didn't also take credit for the sun rising this morning. <laughs> the truth is that those programs and projects would have landed and been delivered to El Paso regardless of his presence. Where we needed him the most for our veterans, for our economic drivers like the MCA and our bridges, he was nowhere to be found. We need someone up to D.C. who's going to show up to work and who's going to get the job done. And I propose to you that I am that person. And tonight, I'm asking for your vote and your support to get there. Thank you. <laughs>